Okay, thank you, Eric, for joining us today. Can you begin by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got to work so closely with neurofeedback? Sure. Um, in, uh, oh gosh, probably 30 years ago, I started studying neurofeedback and biofeedback um, at San Francisco State University um, while I was getting my master's degree. And I became really fascinated in it, uh, with it and ended up um, teaching at, at San Francisco State um, after I'd been doing it for several years. And so in those days, they, the equipment was still analog. So it was, there were these, these dials with needles and stuff like that, but it's the same basic concept. And so um, I, I taught for quite a while. And so I got to help um, other people learn how to do neurofeedback. And interestingly enough, um, when I moved out of the Bay Area, um, and what, what I was talking about was at San Francisco State, um, moved up to the Auburn area and didn't have neurofeedback as part of my part of my practice. And then I had a, um, a head injury um, in 1994 and actually had to stop working for a few years. And I was able, I tried everything. I had an aunt who very kindly helped me with, with you know, paying for um, the, the medical stuff and, and alternative medical stuff to, to get me back to work. And I, I worked with a scalp acupuncturist from UCLA. I did a couple of other kinds of, of neurofeedback that didn't particularly help. And finally, I went down to Pasadena, California, to work with Victoria Ebrick, who's an MD. And she's from Romania, and she also worked at UCLA. Um, and she used a particular kind of neurofeedback called the Roshi, which is neurofeedback with, with additional what's called closed-loop light stimulation. And you put on these goggles with lights that flash, and they help entrain your brainwaves to frequencies we want more of and disentrain from frequencies we want less of. And I had been at the point after the head injury, I didn't even care if I'd ever go back to work. And I was, I had always been someone who was work, work, work. I was always really motivated. And so the fact that I didn't want to go back to work was really significant. Well, I, I went down to Pasadena and worked with, with Dr. Ebrick. And after 10 days of that, I had dramatic improvements in my mood, my ability to concentrate and focus, my energy level. I mean, I was just astonished because nothing else I'd done had after the head injury had really made any difference at all. And so I went home and began planning to go back to work. I, I mean, it's, 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 I still can feel kind of emotional because I feel like yeah. I, I was told by several doctors after the head injury that I could just forget about, about working again. Yeah. And um, I, I, was, I went through an outpatient brain injury rehab program and they encouraged me to get on social security, because uh, they said, you know, you, you're gonna need this. And then here I was, oh my gosh, because of this particular kind of neurofeedback, I'm able to, to consider going back to work. And indeed, six months later, I did go back to work. And I, yeah, it was, um, it's, it's a pretty great story. And, and yeah. when, I, when I do training with people, I, I can talk about this from, from a personal level of how it, it literally transformed my life. And um, so I started using that particular system called the Roshi, an earlier version, and started getting great results in the practice as well, because I was able to take the knowledge that I had from having taught neurofeedback and, and apply it. And since that time, I, I went back after having not worked for, for several years, and within six months, the practice was full with a waiting list. And it's, and it's stayed that way. And so I'm, I'm just so grateful. And we have worked with all kinds of diagnoses. We've worked with hundreds of people with brain injuries who we've sent some of them back to work, back to school, get productive lives again. Again, people who sometimes were told they, they wouldn't work again. Um, we also work a lot with ADHD and um, the pediatricians in the Auburn area refer to us for ADHD and anxiety with kids and teenagers. And we work with depression and anxiety. And so it's really rewarding. And, you know, I, 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 when I was not working, I was, I, I, I tried to, to keep a positive attitude that this was, 
there was going to be some blessing here mm -hmm. for me and for the world. And I just couldn't see it at all. And then I was able to go back to work and it was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is, this is the blessing. Because mm -hmm. if that hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't be able to help other people who were going through, whether it's a brain injury or ADHD or right. anxiety right. or depression, it was this, it was this huge gift. And I've, I've often said, I would go through that again, if I could help just one of those people. And I was, I've been able to help and we've been able to help um, hundreds and hundreds. It's an incredible story. You really took something positive from your experience and now you're using it to help all your clients and people that come to your, your practice. Can you describe yeah. a little bit more like what, what is exactly neurofeedback and how does it help treat, how do you help treat mental health issues with neurofeedback? Sure. Neurofeedback uses an EEG or electroencephalograph, um, which measures the electrical activity of the brain. And neurologists who are, are doctors who specialize in the brain and nervous system, they use the EEG to assess brain injury, stroke, seizure disorder. And so basically they, they hook you up with like 19 electrodes on your head and then they analyze um, the electrical activity and they're able to make diagnoses. Well, so we don't use 19 electrodes, although sometimes we refer people for, for something called a QEEG to test them with that. But we use four electrodes and we use that to help diagnose what's going on but to a much larger degree, we use it to help train people. So when people are having um, a problem with depression or anxiety or brain injury or ADHD or a number of other things, they have too many of certain brain waves and too little of others. And the brain waves, the electrical activity in the brain is not balanced between the sides of the brain. So the miracle of neurofeedback, and I, I, I shouldn't use the term miracle because there have been um, over 3,000 studies showing that it works. So it's, it's scientifically proven. This isn't, sometimes people think it's alternative medicine. It really isn't. It's just that um, the pharmaceutical companies have so much power that we've gotten to the point um, where we, we think the answer to everything is, is in medication. And sometimes it is, and often it isn't. So this is something where we've got lots and lots of studies that show that it works. So basically, we're training people to change their brainwave patterns. And when they do, and if they do it long enough, and we tell them, hey, you got to come for X amount of time in order for your brain to learn to do it for itself. When, you're, when that client's brain learns to do it for itself, they're done. They don't need to come in anymore. And what I love about this is it's self-empowering. Mm -hmm. So we're teaching people to use their brain differently. And then it's a skill they have the whole rest of their life. Can you describe a typical neurofeedback session? Do you, do you include talk therapy or it's just neurofeedback or what, what is it like with the clients? Oh, thank you. That's actually a great, a great question. Um, over the years, I've gotten to see how a lot of neurofeedback practitioners run their practice, and most of them will just do the neurofeedback, and often they'll just stick somebody in a room and have them practice, and then they'll come back and see how they're doing. And what we do is we have a combination of neurofeedback and psychotherapy. So the first 20 or 25 minutes of the session, we're sort of doing coaching or therapy, depending on what the person needs and wants. And then the second half of the session, we do the neurofeedback. So as people, people make these really significant changes as a result of neurofeedback, and sometimes it takes a while for that momentum to get going, but most of the time people notice right away after the first session or during the first session that they're feeling better and different. So part of what the therapy does or the coaching is we're helping people to make the psychological changes to go along with the physiological and psychological changes from the neurofeedback. So that's our model. And, and I, I just love it because compared to, I, I'm a licensed psychotherapist and compared to when I was quote unquote, just doing psychotherapy, adding in the neurofeedback has meant that people get better much faster and in a much deeper way because there's a physiological change taking place. So combining the physiological and the psychological um, is 
I think, a lot of fun because we get to see people make these profound changes in their lives. That's awesome that you're able to see such dramatic results from, from your clients. Yeah, so it's went, really fun. Go ahead. I just had one more question. As someone who went through a, a traumatic brain injury yourself, what advice do you have for, for clients who are feeling helpless or lost due to mental health struggles for traumatic brain injuries that they may have themselves? Yeah, I think it's really important. But let me address those sort of separately. With a traumatic brain injury, luckily things have, have um, come quite a way since, you know, the, the mid-90s. Um, there's more consciousness about it among doctors, part of it because of the National Football League, um, acknowledging that, that brain injuries are a thing. And, um, but there's still resistance. And if you, if you look at movies and television, um, I think brain injury is kind of where alcoholism was um, 20 years ago where, or 30 years ago, where is kind of seeing someone stumbling drunk or really stoned was considered funny. And with with brain injury, you see all the time um, on television and movies where someone gets hit on the head in some way and it's a laugh line. And it's not funny. <laughs> it's really not funny at all, uh, having worked with a lot of folks with, with brain injury. So I think one thing is getting a good doctor and we're, we can help refer people to, to, to doctors who understand this. Um, and another thing is to realize that People think if they've got a brain injury, it means that they're, um, you know, in a wheelchair or having trouble walking or not functioning well at all. And in reality, with what's called a mild traumatic brain injury or a moderate one, they're probably on the surface looking fairly normal, but inside they're feeling abnormal. I just had a session with a, a, a client on Wednesday who just sustained a, um, a concussion in a car accident, and he's having word finding problems and he's um, just feeling kind of foggy. And that, that, that's, that's not fun if it's happening to you. Um, so getting that support is really important. And with other psychological things, depression, anxiety, um, ADHD, which has actually got a pronounced physiological part, I think just getting with a practitioner who is really present with you, um, knows techniques to help you feel better, um, and also can just be there in a, a kind and loving way. And that's really, really important. And you would think that you would think that all therapists would do that, but not necessarily. I, I, I feel really grateful that I, I've got several people um, working with me um, who just have that ability to be really, really present with clients and be present in a very kind way. Um, while still challenging the client. And that's a, a balance. You don't want to just be kind. You want to be kind and challenge them so that they um, learn new things and, and make progress in their lives. That's really interesting. Thank you so much, Eric, for taking the time to talk with us and share your expertise. And anyone's welcome to contact Eric through his website. And uh, I, I appreciate your time today. I learned a lot oh. from this. It's very interesting. All right. Thank you so much. Some, some great questions. I really appreciate it. Thank you.